during times of gambling addiction and bank robberies. A party known as New Democracy had its breakthrough. John had strong hate towards immigrants. These beliefs was what motivated John to start killing them, even though he partly was an immigrant himself. He hoped this would scare the immigrants away from Sweden. Why he had such a strong hate for immigrants, it's not very clear. John was also one of the police initial suspects to the Olaf Palma assassination in 1986 but could not be linked to the murder because he was serving a sentence at the time for multiple counts of assault. During his time, he became good friends with Myro Barasic, who was a member of the Ustasa, a Serbian terrorist group. Myro had been involved in the shooting of the Yugoslavian ambassador who had been murdered in Stockholm. John felt very inspired by him and kept building a very strong hate towards immigrants. After he was released, he worked as a taxi driver and invested in the stock market, there he found some success. But the money John earned was wasted, his hate for immigrants was still alive, and it wasn't very long until everything started. Between August 1991 to January 1992, John Asanias shot a total of 11 people. The key victims were following David Gebrim Mariam, the first victim who survived the attack, uh, Jimmy Rangibar, the first and only death, Eric bon Bonkam Rudolf, famous scientist up to this day, was shot in the head and Hassan Satara, a store clerk in Hagerstjens Åsen, the last victim in Sweden. The, the reason why John Asanias only managed to kill one person out of 11 was because of his weapon of choice, a Smith & Wesson revolver with a silencer and a laser sight on it, henceforth the alias the laser man. The silencer wasn't screwed on tightly enough, so the bullet passed through the barrel slower and saved people from fatal wounds, except Jimmy Ranjibar. The crime scenes are scattered all over the city and in our neighbor city, Uppsala, where Erik von Kamrudolf was shot. The last shooting took place in the south of Stockholm in a suburb called Hagerstien, at the subway station Hagerstiens Åsen. Other notable locations include Vasastan, Körsbergsvägen, near the Royal Institute of Technology and by Yadet. After the police started a massive manhunt, they caught the laser man during a bank robbery on the 12th of June 1992. He was arrested and brought to the court. John was convicted of murder and robbery, but could not be linked to all of the shootings, although he did confess all the murders in 2000. He was sentenced to life imprisonment and is currently at Österåker prison. In 2002, a book about the laser man was published and became a bestseller. The book is very detailed, 
Three years later, SVT produced a three-part TV miniseries about the Laser Man. The mini TV series stars David Densick from Tinker Tailor Soldier and Spy and a Royal Affair as the Laser Man. The series also became a huge success. Now, before this documentary ends, we have a very special thing to show you. We had the opportunity to interview John Asanius, so we took it. So we asked him a few questions about his life. Since he can't really speak English, the interview is in Swedish, but it's subtitles, so don't worry. Here it is. Hej John! Hej! Tjena John! Jo, idag har jag några frågor att ställa dig. Ja, ah, okej. Okay. Oh. Oh, vi börjar med en fråga som lyder så här. Hur är svenska fängelset? Uh, ja, alltså, jag, jag har varit på några uh, Kumla, Tidaholm. Men här på Östråk uh, tycker jag det är bra. Jaha, okej. Okay. Men är det svårt att leva där? Uh, ja... Det är, man måste ha en plan. Det är viktigt att man blir placerad på en lugn avdelning eh, där man får vara i fred med sitt. Eh, gärna med äldre killar. Eh, det finns eh, så många ungtuppar i fängelse som har så mycket att bevisa. Sånt orkar jag inte med. Ja, Okej, okay. men har du någon kontakt med resten av världen då förutom fängelset? Um, jag har en blogg. får en del besök på den. Eh, journalister hör av sig ganska ofta. Ibland ställer jag upp på en intervju och sådär. Det är, ja, det är det. Mm. Ja. Tror du att folk är fortfarande rädda för dig? <laughs> Nej, jag, jag hoppas verkligen inte det. Jag, jag är inte farlig. Men förklara din förlovningssituation då. Det är, det är en privat sak. Ja, okej. Ja, men hur fördriver du tiden på fängelset? Uh, som sagt, uh, jag har en plan. Jag studerar, läser mycket, tränar en del och medverkar i olika kulturaktiviteter. Helgen är uh, extra långt tråkig. Ångrar du det du har gjort då? Uh, ja, jag ångrar mig djupt. Jag, jag har erkänt mina brott och bearbetat mitt hat. Att vara fri från hat är en underbar känsla och en stor lättnad. Tror du att du kommer leva år 2030 när du släpps? Då är jag nästan 80 år. Mitt straff är inte tidsbestämt så jag vet inte när jag kommer ut. Jag tar ett år i taget. Okej, okay, det där var alla frågor. Tack så mycket för att du ställde upp på intervjun. Ja, varsågod.